Hello students, welcome to the session. Today I am going to explain about cubital fossa. So cubital fossa, it is the fossa that is situated in the front of the elbow, homologous to the popliteal fossa in the knee. So it is a triangular fossa in the sense it is an inverted triangular fossa as you are seeing in the slide. So apex of the fossa is directed lower by the meeting point of two important muscles whereas the base is directed upwards. So it is a triangular fossa in the front of the elbow or elbow joint. So we have the relations that is roof, floor, boundaries of the cubital fossa. Coming to the roof of the cubital fossa, first you will be seeing the skin. Once you reflect the skin, you will be seeing superficial fascia. In the superficial fascia, you are seeing the cephalic vein laterally, basilic vein medially and the joining vein which is used for intravenous injections is the median cubital vein and you also see the cutaneous nerves that is medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm and one bicipital aponeurosis. So that is an expansion that is formed by the tendon of biceps brachii muscle before its insertion to radial tuberosity and you also find the deep fascia. So once you reflect all these layers then you find the contents of the cubital fossa. So these are the roof of the cubital fossa. So in the picture you are going to see that the cephalic vein is seen laterally superficially and basilic vein medially and connecting this you have the median cubital vein. You can also appreciate the medial cutaneous nerve of the forearm, lateral cutaneous nerve of the forearm okay, and also the bicipital aponeurosis which is an expansion from the tendon of biceps brachii which is all the way passing medially and it is inserting to the posterior subcutaneous border of the ulna. So all these are the roof relations for the cubital fossa. Coming to the floor relations. So floor is formed by two muscles. That is in the upper part it is the lower part of the brachialis as it comes towards this insertion to the coronoid process of the ulna. So you are seeing the brachialis in the upper part forming the floor of the cubital fossa and in the lower part laterally you find the supinator muscle. So that forms the floor that is bra brachialis above and supinator below forms the floor for the cubital fossa. Coming to the boundaries of the cubital fossa, so as I've already told it is an inverted triangle. So base of the triangle is directed upwards and you are seeing there it is formed by an imaginary line that is joining the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. Okay, so an imaginary line joining the two epicondyles whereas the apex is directed lower where you have the meeting of two important muscles of the anterior compartment of the forearm that is pronate arteries medially and brachioradialis laterally. I repeat pronate arteries medially and brachioradialis laterally. To be particular it is the medial boundary formed by the lateral border of pronate arteries and the lateral border or lateral boundary is formed by the medial border of brachioradialis. So joining of these two muscles that is pronate arteries and brachioradialis forms the apex of the tri uh, triangular cubital fossa. So in this picture also you can see the two important muscles there pronate arteries passing medially to laterally to the radius for its insertion so that is the pronate arteries humero ulnar head of the pronate arteries is there okay that is the origin and insertion has to pass laterally to the radius. So that forms the medial boundary of cubital fossa and laterally you see the brachioradialis muscle from the supracondylar ridge of the humerus you have that brachioradialis muscle coming as the lateral boundary of the cubital fossa. So if we finished with the boundaries. So in this picture also you can see the lower portions of biceps brachii muscle before it is inserting to the radial tuberosity it is giving an expansion that is called as bicipital aponeurosis and you can also appreciate the muscle pronate arteries medially and brachioradialis laterally. Coming to the contents of the cubital fossa. So you can name it from lateral to medial or medial to lateral. So naming it from lateral to medial, you will be having the first content as radial nerve. It is dividing into two branches here, superficial and deep branch. Okay, afterwards you are finding the tendon of biceps brachii where it's coming for insertion and medial to that you will be finding the brachial artery with its two terminal branches there that is radial and ulnar artery then medial most structure in the cubital fossa is median nerve. 
So showing the contents here from medial to lateral side, so I can name it. So median nerve is the medial most structure. Then you are seeing brachial artery with its two terminal branches that is radial artery and the largest terminal branch is the ulnar artery. And then you find the tendon of biceps brachii and lateral most content is the radial nerve. You can see its two termination there. One is the superficial branch of radial nerve that becomes cutaneous and the deep branch of radial nerve which is also called as posterior interosseous nerve. So that pierces the supinatar muscle, the floor of the cubital fossa. So a deep branch or posterior interosseous nerve pierces the supinatar muscle and it enters the posterior compartment of the forearm. It supplies the muscles there. Okay. So lateral most content is the radial nerve where it, you can see in the cubital fossa its two terminal branches. So lastly come to the applied aspects as I have already told median cubital vein is a vein of choice for intravenous injections and brachial artery is usually the artery that is used universally for recording the blood pressures auscultating and understanding this anatomy of the cubital fossa is very important in dealing with the fractures around the elbow. Thank you.